Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. Let's talk about how to choose the tense of your story. Verb tense is seemingly a very small decision, but it can actually have a huge ripple effect on the story and it can actually be a very creative decision to make. Anything that's impacting the form of your story and how you're deciding to tell the story can actually have a huge effect on the story itself. Tense can affect the point of view, how the events are framed, and even the story's logic. And it's something you want to put thought into because it's not an easy thing to change. If you've ever tried to change the tense of an entire piece, especially if it's a novel, it is not the most fun task to undertake. But something you want to think about at the beginning, make sure you're choosing right. Now for a long time, past tense was the go-to and the majority of fiction was written in past tense. Present tense has become a more popular choice, it's become a little trendier, and we're seeing much more fiction in present tense. Present tense has become the norm for first-person young adult fiction, and you're actually seeing it a lot more in adult fiction as well. Previously uncommon point of view choices, like third-person present tense, are actually becoming fairly popular to the point that the decision to write in present tense doesn't seem so bold anymore. Whereas in the past, the default may have been to just write everything in past tense, now you're a little more open to writing in whichever tense will benefit your story the most. Now some people have very strong opinions on this. A lot of people really dislike present tense, um, they think that past tense is better writing, they think present tense is kind of just a cheap gimmick, and that past tense is always the most effective way to tell a story. There will always be people who have strong opinions about things like this, but both present tense and past tense are fine. Both have benefits, both can lead to great writing. Neither is a gimmick, neither is easier, neither is a crutch. It really just depends on what will benefit the story the most. I'm gonna start with a bit of a cheat sheet guideline. Of course, I think it's always best to think about these decisions a bit more deeply, but these are some general guiding rules based on genre and category conventions. If you're writing in third person, use past tense. If you're writing young adult in first person, use present tense. And if you're writing adult in first person, use past. There's of course a lot more to think about, but when in doubt, these are the category conventions. And these are probably the least obtrusive choices that you can make. Let's start by talking about present tense. This once trendy and somewhat avant-garde tense choice is now fairly commonplace, especially among young adults. Now let's talk about the benefit. First of all, it's very intense and immediate. This makes sense as we're with the character as everything is happening. So everything is very high and everything is very immediate. It's also very psychically close and intimate. This comes from the immediacy. When we're literally with the character as they're experiencing the events, we tend to feel very close to this character because there's no time separating their emotions from what we're experiencing. It also feels like real time. Now, writing in perfect real time is very difficult. Um, it can be done in third person, but Reading in present tense tends to feel the closest, like reading something in real time as it's actually happening. In some genres, it's also not conventional. It would almost feel experimental to find a fantasy book written in the third person present tense. This would be very strange, but sometimes breaking conventions is what you need, especially if your book is going to be unconventional in other aspects. As well, it has a simple chronology. Everything is either happening in the moment, or it's a flashback that was happening before the current moment. Anything happening in the present is in present tense, anything happening in the past is in past tense. It's very simple to distinguish the past and the present, and everything happening in the present is going to unfold linearly. So that said, let's look at some drawbacks. The first one is actually kind of the same as the final benefit, just depending on your story, and it's that you have less freedom for the structure and the chronology of your story. You can't move through time at will because the story hasn't happened yet for the main character. That means the main character has to tell the story in the order the events happen to them. They can't flash forward in time or really tell the story out of order. Of course, they can flash back to something that happened before the story began, but in terms of the actual plotline of the story, they have to tell it in the order that it's happening. It's harder to navigate time, therefore it's harder to navigate structure. It can also lead to floppier writing. What happens when the character is just taking life as it comes to them? Well, it makes it harder for them to self-edit redundant detail. Like I said earlier, present tense is the closest to real time. What happens in real time? Well, you're taking in everything in your environment. The character hasn't gotten to the point where they know what's relevant and what's not, and so it often seems natural to include a lot of pointless details. This can lead to the inclusion of a lot of unnecessary character actions or overall messier writing. And finally, it can also be illogical. If you're a fan of present tense, this is going to be the worst thing you've ever heard. I'm really sorry. I like present tense and this shattered me when I first heard this. Present tense is inherently illogical. Present tense 
sense is mimicking how we experience life. Throughout our life, we can't pause our narrative except when we go to sleep. That means that a scene break is inherently illogical. Anytime you use narrative summary, it's inherently illogical. We can't summarize our life or compress time as it's happening to us. It doesn't really make sense to even break our life into chapters. In present tense, the story hasn't happened, so we wouldn't know where to start the story, you know? If the story starts before the inciting incident, we wouldn't know to start the story there because the story hasn't happened. This is, of course, awful to think about, and I hate thinking about it. And to be honest, you might not really care. I still use scene breaks, I still use narrative summary, I still use all these things because there's really no way around it. Sometimes you have to make concessions in logic in order to just write a story. But if this is going to bother you and you care a lot about the logic of your form, present tense doesn't really lend to that. Present tense is often seen in young adult, contemporary, or literary fiction, and although it offers less freedom, if that's not going to be an issue with your storytelling, the immediacy and intensity of this tense can make it a great choice. Now let's talk about past tense. This more conventional tense is much less controversial, and although a lot of people claim that it's easier to write, I really don't believe that that's the case. Both tenses offer unique challenges, so let's once again start by talking about the benefits. A lot of these you're going to recognize because they pair a little bit with the drawbacks from present tense. The first one is that you have complete structural freedom. You can compress or move through time at will. The story has already happened, so the character can narrate the events in whatever order makes most sense for them. This tense is also invisible and non-intrusive. Readers won't really notice if a story is in past tense. I don't know anyone who says that they're bothered or annoyed by past tense. It's not something that they'll have to get used to. You just don't really notice it. Although sometimes the unconventional quality of present tense can be used to your benefit, if you don't want the reader to be paying attention to the tense, you don't want them distracted by something by tense, past tense might be the best option. Past tense is also more reflective. The character has already experienced the story, that means they're able to think back on the events. This can create more sympathy for the character because they're able to reflect on their actions and on the story, which is something that they just can't do in present tense. Many writers find their writing is cleaner in past tense, that they include fewer redundancies and that their phrasing is overall cleaner. This isn't a guarantee, and I think it depends a lot on what you're used to but this is something that many writers find to be the case. Now let's talk about the drawbacks. The first one is tense confusion. In present tense, it can be very easy to navigate the difference between a flashback and the present. Whereas in the past tense, you have so many different forms of past tense that if you're not using them correctly, it can actually lead to a lot more timeline confusion. If you're not using chronology tags to properly indicate where we are on the timeline, it can become very confusing and it's easier for the reader to lose track of where they are. The timeline is also a lot more complicated. This can be both a benefit and a drawback, but when you're writing in past tense, especially first person past tense, you have to think about the fact that the character is telling the story from a certain point, meaning you kind of have two inherent timelines. You have the timeline of the story and you have the point the character is telling the story from. This can become incredibly complicated if your story has multiple timelines. This doesn't mean you need a distinct frame. Sometimes that's a technique that writers use, but we don't need to know anything about where the character is telling the story from. But inherently it's there. They are telling the story in the past tense. That means that somewhere in their life at a certain point, they've decided to tell the story and there is a timeline associated with that. It can become very confusing, it can be really difficult to navigate, and it can make your timeline very complicated. It can also lead to distant writing. If the writer doesn't have a good handle on psychic distance or point of view, it's much easier to be very distant in past tense because we're adding all of this distance of time between the event and the character. We don't have that immediacy, so it can be really distant, so it can be really easy for the point of view to drift super far from the character. You see past tense used in most third-person works, especially in genres like fantasy, sci-fi, historical fiction, really any adult genre fiction, as well as YA or middle grade written in the third person. So that's an intro to the tenses. To summarize, present tense has the benefit of being intense, immediate, and psychically close, as well as having a simpler chronology. It's also less conventional, which can be to your benefit if you're writing a more experimental work. However, it offers less freedom with the structure and chronology, can lead to messier writing, and it is unfortunately inherently illogical. On the other hand, past tense has the benefits of complete structural freedom, being an invisible tense that readers won't really notice, offering more opportunities for reflection, and often leading to cleaner writing. However, as a drawback, the timeline and the chronology can become very confusing, and it's also easier for this tense to become very different. So that is how to choose tense, 
Thank you so much for watching. Which is your favorite tense to write in? I really enjoy both, to be honest, it's hard for me to choose. I like writing first person past tense, but I also enjoy writing third person present tense. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.